Good morning. Thank you for joining Parks and Clean Water for Everyone, a special briefing on Kathy, Governor Kathy Hochul's proposed environmental budget. I am Andy Bicking, Director of Government Relations and Public Policy for Sina Hudson and your MC for this morning's event. Today's webinar will last an hour and conclude at 11 a.m. We will be hearing introductory remarks from Sina Hudson President Ned Sullivan, followed by State Parks Commissioner Eric Kulisid's presentation, which will address a lot of issues in the budget, but focus on the parks and environmental priorities contained within. Following the presentation, Commissioner Kulisid will take your questions. Please post them in the Q&A and the toolbar located on your Zoom screen, and I will read them aloud in the order in which they were received. And if you'd like to post about this event on social media, please feel free to use the hashtags NY Enviro Fund and NY Bond Act. And if you're not on Twitter, if you are on Twitter, don't forget to tag State Parks and Sina Hudson. I believe most of the participants in the meeting today have some knowledge of the state budget process, but here's a quick recap. Each year, the governor proposes New York state budget and submits it to the state legislature and the people of New York for the review and comment. The assembly, Senate and governor then enter into three-way negotiations. The final budget is reviewed and by law, it is required to be passed by April 1st. Programs funded through the state budget are implemented over the course of the state's fiscal year. This year's budget contains many exciting environmental measures that will benefit the Hudson Valley in New York State, including the Parks Capital Fund, the Environmental Protection Fund, and the Clean Water, Clean Air, and Green Jobs Environmental Bond Act. We appreciate the commitment by the governor and the commissioner to bring this important information to you in an accessible and COVID safe format. It's now my pleasure to introduce Sina Hudson's president, Ned Sullivan, who has led Sina Hudson for 22 years and serves on Governor Hochul's Mid-Hudson Regional Economic Development Council and the Agriculture and Forestry Advisory Panel of the Climate Action Council. Ned? Thank you, Andy, for your important role in leading Sina Hudson's government affairs work and to all those working behind the scenes to bring today's webinar. Good morning and welcome all. I'm thrilled and honored to be with you today and to introduce you to Eric Kulisade, the New York Parks Agency Commissioner and a friend to all who care about the land and environment of our state. We at Sina Hudson think of Eric as a key ally in our work to preserve land and farms and to create parks that connect people with the inspirational power of the Hudson River. In my role, I'm honored to work with Governor Hochul and her environmental commissioners, notably Commissioner Kulisade, Basil Sagos of the Department of Environmental Conservation and Agriculture Commissioner Richard Ball. Together with our local government and community partners, we work to provide the people of the Hudson Valley with the tools and supports to, to strengthen their communities and to make the region a model of sustainability and quality of life for all who live and work here and enjoy its world-class beauty and outdoor recreational resources. New York State has a long tradition of nation-leading environmental policies. And during her tenure as Lieutenant Governor and now Governor, Kathy Hochul has demonstrated her commitment to the environment and the green jobs that go with state investments in parks, clean water infrastructure, the agricultural economy, and renewable energy. The governor's 2022 budget is a home run for the environment, for clean water, for parks, and for climate-friendly farming, part of her broad policy commitment to tackling climate change. Governor Hochul has said that she wants her legacy to be as the leading New York State Parks governor of all time, even surpassing Teddy Roosevelt. We stand ready to support her in this goal. Her budget commitment to increase funding for parks capital, the Environmental Protection Fund, 
Clean Water Infrastructure and a $4 billion Environmental Bond Act all demonstrate she is on her way to fulfilling that goal. I'd like to share one quick example of, recent success, of a recent success story in the making. Years ago, construction of the Tap NZ Bridge in the village of Tarrytown cut off a large portion of the waterfront and community from the Hudson River. Fortunately, the village and local and regional partners are rallying to reestablish that public access by connecting two stray ends of Westchester County's Riverwalk Trail under the Mario Cuomo Bridge. Closing this 0.9 mile gap in the 51 mile trail will open up new river access, opportunities to visit historic sites, to cross the bridge to Rockland County, and for commuters to walk and bike to the Metro North Railroad Station. I'm thrilled that the environmental review and permitting of this project with Tarrytown as the lead agency is supported generously in Governor Hochul's proposed budget. Complementing funds provided by Westchester County Executive Latimer. You can see an image of the future project on the screen. Governor Hochul heard directly from environmental, municipal, and business leaders that this was important, that this should be a priority and it should be in her state of the state. She listened and responded and put it in her state of the state and in her budget. So we were all thrilled. There is well-documented evidence that parks and trail projects like these return $5 to the regional economy and local economy for every dollar that is invested, contributing to our region's $4 billion tourism and recreation economy. The progress we make over time in the Hudson Valley in protecting and enhancing our remarkable natural and recreational resources reflect the genuine partnerships and communication that go on among organizations and the collective commitment to listening to the people and communities and developing a shared sense of purpose with our leaders in government. And in this respect, I can't imagine a better partner in state governor in government than Commissioner Kulisade. Prior to becoming a commissioner of state parks, Eric had a, a stellar career in conservation at the Open Space Institute, the Trust for Public Lands, in senior positions in the state parks department. His formal, his first formal, formal job was as a lifeguard at Harriman State Park in the 1980s. A native of the Hudson Highlands, he's the real deal. Land and parks are in his blood, and I am proud to call him a friend. So with that, please join me in welcoming Commissioner Eric Kulisade. Uh, thank you, Ned. Uh, and actually, just before, before I before I launch in, um, I just wanted to also introduce uh, uh, Pavan Naidu from the governor's office, the regional office, regional rep for, for Governor Hochul in Hudson Valley. Uh, and he will be uh, joining me at the end to sort of take questions and do follow ups. So uh, thank you, Pavan, for, for joining the team today. Uh, obviously, uh, first of all, uh, thank you to Scenic Hudson for hosting us today. Um, uh, you know, uh, Scenic Hudson is really a glorious, a glorious partner for us. They allow us to extend our reach, leverage us, uh, extend our skill set, and enable us to do the kind of conservation that, that we aspire to do, uh, but it really is necessary to have a, a partner like them. Uh, they are a tremendous partner, and, and I'm really very grateful for you hosting this today. Uh, and I think I, I, what I, what I, when I think of when I think of Scenic Hudson, I think of their sort of abiding, uh, compelling, and complete vision of the Hudson Valley community. And I use a you know, community as a place of thriving downtowns, clean water and air, contained sprawl, thriving agriculture and vibrant history. Uh, and, and thank you to you for, for keeping that vision going. It guides us all through administration after administration and, and you do just tremendous work. So thank you and thank you for inviting uh, me to be here today. Uh, so what we're gonna do, um, is 
Uh, hold on a second, I just have to, well, that might not I'm really advancing now, right now, of course. I am just now trying to advance. Sorry, we had all this. Uh, oh, there we go. Okay. So uh, just to give you a preview. So today's, I think, as, as I think today's focus is going to be on um, obviously the environmental, the environmental portions of the bond deck, but of, of the uh, of the of the state budget. But I am going to just run through some of the other eight priorities. You'll, we're going to touch on the other eight priorities just so we can uh, obviously see the scope, the breadth and scope of the governor's proposals. And obviously, at the end, uh, I invite you to um, ask questions, obviously, on any of the topics you want to. Um, so uh, I think it, it goes without saying in, in this world, in today's age, that, that our healthcare system has never been under greater strain with heightened need, COVID, opioid epidemic, uh, and yet staffing and other resources for the healthcare system are suffering. And so the governor's budget proposed to address that, to grow our healthcare personnel, grow up healthcare their staffing, and make sure that we can address these and position New York for the next crisis, or just to make sure that we are um, you know, really uh, to taking care of all the health challenges before us. Uh, obviously, we still live in a world where gun violence is, is out of, is, is really not under control. Uh, and the governor has proposed a, a suite of priorities to make sure that we are uh, strengthening, uh, strengthening the laws against violence and also going into the communities and addressing violence and these kinds of guns issues in the communities where these, where these problems arise. Um, the governor is very, uh, wants to make sure we're investing in people. Um, you know, unemployment continues to be a challenge for New York, particularly in the, in the New York City area. Uh, so we need to make sure we're giving the resources to our businesses and, our, and, the, and, the, and, the, and to train staff to make sure that, and the, the middle class tax cuts to make sure that we are providing the environment, the economic environment, the business environment, the hiring environment, the labor pool, uh, that can that can sustain New York's growth into the future. Uh, investing in New York's communities, I'm going to actually pause here just a little bit, just because um, you know you think of investment in communities. Obviously, is um, transportation, roads, uh, a lot of the things we need in order to have a sustained economy. But in but nestled in this uh, are some really uh, interesting things for us. Um, You'll see here is actually Ned referred earlier to um, the uh, Ned referred to the the Riverwalk project that is listed actually in this section of the budget as an investment in the community because that's what it is. Same thing as we have a proposed park park in downtown Rochester. That's an investment in the community. It's like economic development. It just reminds you that what we do, even in the environmental sector, is not limited. It's the impacts are not limited to the environmental sector. They're very much investments in communities uh, to make sure that we all live in the place that we want to live. Also, housing. We have a housing crisis. We have a whole, there's homeless crisis, and the governor has got proposals in here to make sure that we are, um, you know, building our building our neighborhoods, expanding affordability, and making sure that our communities are again are places where people can live and find affordable work. Our housing costs are skyrocketing, uh, and and we're not making housing strong enough. So the governor has proposals to. 100,000 new housing units, affordable housing units across the state. That's obviously in tandem with what New York City is doing. So it's a, it's a it's totally necessary in order to make sure that the, that the state we live in is a place we can all afford and, and build our lives. Uh, I'm going to skip over what normally is number six is environment. We're going to come back to that at the end. Obviously, our schools need to have investment both at the uh, you know secondary and elementary level, but also at the uh, at the at the university level. And the governor's focused on student debt. Uh, she's focused on uh, creating flagship campuses in the state to make sure that our education is, is, is second to none. The SUNY system is among the best systems in the country and she aims to keep it that way. Uh, and so that's a big part of her agenda. Uh, we are also always thinking about uh, diversity. New York is obviously one of the most diverse states in the country and we need to make sure that we are providing opportunities for minority and women-owned businesses uh, and to make sure that all communities in New York are participating in the growth and renewed success under of the state. Uh, and then finally, uh, we, she, the governor has proposed measures really 
landmark measures to make sure that ethics and transparency become the hallmark of New York State government. Part of that is by reforming the Joint Council on Professional on Political Ethics. Uh, that will uh, that will be she wants to disband that, restructure it, and for the first time in history, proposing actually term limits on all statewide office holders, which obviously is a huge change and and really would, would helps to. Um, uh, reduce the chances of having a culture that just uh, continues on. It's, uh, it's, it's just tremendous, um, uh, just tremendously visionary initiatives. So now we're going to circle back to uh, number six. Obviously, this is the area that, that most of uh, what I do is in and our sister agency, the DEC and, uh, and, uh, and Ag and Markets uh, under Commissioners uh, Sagos and Ball. Uh, who are obviously leaders, Commissioner Segos leading the Con Climate Action Council, uh, which is charged with taking on uh, New York's very ambitious agenda. Just want to remind this group uh, that the uh, New York State is a national leader uh, in the fight for climate, to, to, to combat climate change and to develop resiliency. Uh, some of the most ambitious goals in the country, and you look here, that we want to have net zero gas greenhouse gas emissions economy wide by 2050, and that is a tall order. Uh, and it was it's only it was enacted in 2019, uh, but we are still we are going down that path. And and in this governor, Governor Hochul, uh, sees this as one of her key issues, and is doubling down. So we're going to just talk, talk through this. Uh, uh, we're going to talk through this a little more. Uh, specifically. So in this sector, um, you know, in order to get to 70%, we have a, we have an interim goal of 70% of renewable energy statewide by 2030. You can see by this chart, uh, we've got a ways to go. Uh, and so we really need to be, now is the time to be making those investments. These investments don't happen. They don't go into service overnight. So it's a matter of continuing to be aggressive in the wind, solar storage, and other technologies. We'll come circle back to that in a second on specifics. Obviously, um, you know, greenhouse emissions come from a variety of sectors of the economy. We've got to be addressing electricity. We've got to be addressing. Uh, sorry, I don't know if other people, if the if the speaker panel is uh, masking uh, the uh, the key to this. But anyway, you can see sort of the buildings, transportation, electricity, waste, industry, agriculture, all comp all contribute to it, and we need to be addressing all of those as we as we move ahead. And so and so it's, it's, it gives you a sense of the complexity. Uh, and the and the and the breadth of this issue is a challenge for us to address. But fortunately, the governor uh, is 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 stepping up to this, and I think it's a way, in a way again that it, it, this is seen as not just protecting the environment, but it's also boosting our economy. And so we have a proposal to to again keep New York as really the number one offshore wind. Um, uh, uh, generator in the, in the east, make us make sure we continue to be the most aggressive state in making sure we're going to offshore, offshore wind with $500 million to be invested in offshore wind and making sure the supply chain is uh, actually happening here in New York so that things that the New York state economy benefits from, from all the wind technology that's going on. Obviously, big goals for New York City with storage and, for, and provision of, of, uh, of, of renewable energy. Uh, Statewide, we need to decarbonize the building. The buildings continue, you saw by that previous chart, buildings continue to be a large area where we need to address climate change. And so we're looking at making sure our homes are becoming electrified. The governor's got an aggressive uh, proposal on, 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 on halting gas hookups in order to even wean us off of those transition uh, carbon fuels that, um, that we need to sort of wean ourselves off from. Uh, we are also gonna be looking at uh, aggressively expanding our electric fleet in terms of state vehicles and across the across the state to make sure to make sure we have the, the charging stations and the uh, what we need in order to support uh, ve uh, electric vehicle fleets. Uh, and then we come back to um, obviously uh, near and dear to uh, uh, this agency uh, and to Cena Cutson. Here's the here's the here's the core of what we're talking about, and that is. In, in the investment in the environment and community spaces. Again, that word community, right? What we're doing in the environment is about community. Uh, so we are obviously very excited for ourselves. Uh, as Ned noted, uh, that we are looking to get, our, our parks are seeing record uh, visitation. Uh, last year, we hit 78 million for the second time. Uh, our top, our, that's our top attendance records in history. Uh, and 
that means but we need to have a park system that is stand, stood up and ready to welcome those people uh, particularly downstate we are approaching challenges with what we can do uh, to welcome people. We actually have facilities in some of our parks downstate that we've been closing the last 40 years. And we make, need to make sure that our capacity is the top level. Uh, we are partnering with Scenic Hudson on a very exciting project in the Hudson Valley uh, to create a, a shoreline trail in the Hudson Valley between Beacon and Cold Spring that will be easily accessible by train and public transportation from the city. Uh, these are the kinds of investments we need to make to make sure that our parks continue to welcome people. We are grateful to Governor Hochul. We are grateful to Cena Cuts and support uh, for that $200 million number. It allows us, it's a, it's a vote of confidence in our ability, and we are excited to be able to embark on that program uh, to put ourselves in a great position. 2024 happens to be the 100th anniversary of the state park system as a unit, as such as it is, uh, and we are excited to be advancing into that, that important anniversary uh, with, uh, with, with, uh, with, uh, with the tools that we need not just in capital, but also in staffing uh, and other uh, operating budget in order to enable us to sort of step into that future. Um, we are uh, also obviously um, along with that, we have uh, the Bond Act. The Bond Act is, a, is an exciting proposal. Obviously we were disappointed in 2020 it was pulled, but we are happy that it's back with an additional billion dollars in it. The Bond Act is, uh, is again, Again, emphasizing the green jobs, that's the, that's the, that is the, the new language around the Bond Act. And there's restoration resiliency uh, in, this, in this Bond Act. It's investments water quality. It is investments in New York's green infrastructure uh, that is very exciting. If there's a park number there, we have restoration projects, parks. We have, we obviously, we have more shoreline. Parks has more shoreline than any other uh, landowner in the state of New York. And so that leaves us vulnerable. So we need to be aggressive about addressing climate change because it's coming right at us. It's coming at us at the barrier islands on, on, on Long Island. It's coming at us in the Hudson Valley, in our Hudson Valley parks. All these places are places where we need to be addressing that and stepping up. And the Bond Act is a huge uh, way to get that. Obviously, the water quality improvement programs continue to make sure that our water sources are clean on Long Island and around the state. Um, and then obviously within ours, we need to live with this. We need to be better at green procurement for ourselves. Uh, we need to protect those massive uh, hotspots of biodiversity like the Catskills and the Highlands and the Adirondacks and, and some of those big state forests out west uh, to make sure that we are protecting biodiversity and, and, and also these, these special landscapes. Uh, and then obviously in part 60, I'm very happy to see uh, that, that enhancing our state park system is part of those priorities. We were, like I said, incredibly gratified uh, that we were included uh, in, that, in, this, in this scope of work. Uh, that is, so that is, I'm happy to go back up on any of this stuff, um, but it is, uh, you know, this community, and I realize I'm speaking, you know, mainly to, and I recognize a lot of the names here. It's great to see everybody. Uh, but what we are, um, you know, this, this community has really supported this. You have fought for this. Uh, I forgot to mention the $400 million EPF, uh, which increases land for land conservation, increases our programs that for bringing, connecting underserved communities with our parks. Uh, for uh, for our, our our grants to our grants to land trusts, uh, grants to park friends groups, um, and and you should be taking uh, you know a bow for for having consistently year after year supported that program. Make sure its programs are working as, as well as they could, and putting us in a position to propose four hundred million with the confidence that that money will be spent judiciously, strategically in our communities to make sure that. The environment in New York is number one, and that we position ourselves again as the Empire State uh, and the leader uh, going forward in the environmental field. Um, I sort of ran through that pretty quick. I'm happy to go back through any more materials, um, but uh, that is uh, that is uh, that's the sum of, of where we are today. And again, thanks to Cena Cutson for inviting me to come and present this today. Well, thank you, Commissioner, for those great remarks, and Ned, for your introductory remarks as well. We have a lot of wonderful questions coming in on the chat, so let's jump into those. And I'll just note uh, that if we don't get to all of them, uh, we will be making sure that the governor's staff gets a copy of the questions, and if we have it, your contact information, so somebody will be able to get back to you. 
Uh, Commissioner, the um, first question that we have received is from uh, Simon Strauss. He asks if you could please talk about the availability of funds in the budget to assist towns with their open space inventories and comprehensive plans. Uh, Simon notes that his town has actually created a natural resource inventory with technical support from the DEC and is now looking for grant funds to implement projects. Uh, thank you for that question. Um, and yes, I, I invite you to look closely at the uh, municipal grants program. It's actually a, a, a nonprofits and municipalities are both eligible for that funding. It's state grant funding that allows you to help offset the cost of land acquisition. It allows you to offset the cost of actually historic preservation, of planning, uh, and also of, of building park infrastructure. So it's, it's a robust program. It got a a $6 million increase this year. Uh, we'd like to see that keep going up because we think that is, you know, this governor understands that local governments are the place where a lot of this happens, has to happen, and local governments need to have the resources. And I think grant programs like this are great for that. So I invite them to uh, take a look at that. The CFA, you know, the consolidated funding uh, application under the uh, Regional Economic Development Councils will be probably be launched. We expect that to launch in May with a deadline for grant submissions by the end of July and announcements of grants uh, this coming December. So definitely, and, and happy to uh, connect with, uh, with the town. And if they want to get more information, we can get them to uh, the right person within the agency just to learn more about those programs. Wonderful. Uh, next question coming from Janet Burnett, who asks uh, that or notes that historic preservation of sites, landscapes, and structures often provides intrinsic opportunities to protect water, biodiversity, and diverse cultural history. America 250 is on its way. Are there special grants and programs for the preservation and conservation to celebrate this anniversary? Uh, Janet, nice to hear from you. Uh, I there right now. So just recently, um, as part of last year's legislation, there'll be a Revolutionary War Commission is expected to be established fairly soon, made up of uh, uh, representatives appointed by the by the houses of the legislature and by the Department of Education and the Office of Parks. Uh, we expect that to begin to mobilize for to plan for the Revolutionary War commemoration. Uh, and so I think you should expect to see that showing up. I would say, obviously, we are the owners of, I think, 30 of our historic sites, 35 of our historic sites have a tie to the Revolutionary War, and we ourselves are looking at ways to make sure those sites tell a comprehensive story about New York and its pivotal role uh, in that war, in, in that struggle, and I often like to say, you know, uh, you know, you said it, it all began with, with Paul Revere's ride and it ended down in Yorktown, but most of that war was fought over New York soil. It's really where it happened. It's really, we, we, it, was, it was won here, so uh, we ought to be drawing attention to that. Thanks. Great. Uh, next question coming from Jeff Leon. Um, I'm going to paraphrase here. Uh, is there money in the budget to immediately reduce emissions? by allowing all state agencies to convert their grid electric supply to renewables, convert automotive fleets to electric cars, and to put solar panels on state rooftops over parking lots? Um, I will say, uh, as to the larger picture for, for automatic, we are doing that ourselves. I mean, we are investing our capital budget in solar. Uh, we are right now, we are targeting for, for an agency that really had no renewable energies in 2013, we're hoping to be 20, we have declared an objective we've been implementing, we'll be 20% off the grid by 2025, and we expect to be 70% by 2030. So uh, we, are, we are pulling ourselves off the grid uh, that is happening across state agencies, largely through their own capital investments, um, but, it's, uh, but, but so it's something we are definitely taking to heart. And nice to see you, Jeff. Great, wonderful questions coming in and please post them in the Q&A. We'll get to as many as we possibly can. And of course, uh, any that we don't get to, we'll be sharing with the governor's staff so they can follow up with you directly. Uh, the next question, Commissioner, relates uh, to the Parks Capital budget. Uh, notes that the governor has proposed an increase there, uh, but as also note that the uh, park system is stressed by a lot of new visits due to COVID. Uh, people seeking socially distanced recreation, and also that many sites have not yet recovered from Hurricanes Irene and Lee. Uh, so it's a two-part question asking about uh, 
the deferred maintenance in existing facilities and also where some of the new opportunities might be in the Hudson Valley and throughout New York State to develop um, uh, new projects. Uh, so Ned may also be interested in, in commenting on this one after you uh, make some remarks. So um, yes, and that is that is that is this that is the game changer. You know, Ned mentioned the fact that this governor's aspiration is to be you know the the, the greatest governor of all times when it comes to park and and I think this this investment in our future the the increase of, of ninety million will allow us to address a lot of those. Uh, issues that you're seeing uh, from from the damage from from Hurricane uh, from Tropical Storm Irene and Lee, right, and Hurricane Sandy, where we're still coming back from, uh, it allows us to to delve into parks more deeply, like Harriman, like Bear Mountain, uh, new opportunities in Kingston and in the Hudson Fjord area. Uh, it really allows us to sort of think about um, advancing. Advancing uh, our our the quality and the condition of our of our parks um, across the state, right? Not just in some of the flagships that have gotten a lot of the investment. So I, I take my hat off the governor. You know the governor's extraordinary. She's she's the governor is actually overnights in our parks. She goes to Allegheny. She goes to uh, Sampson Lake State Park. She, she's in our parks. Uh, goes to Alano when she has spare time. So. Uh, I'm, I'm very optimistic that we're going to be able to address a lot of those issues that have plagued us uh, really for, because of, and you know, uh, we, we've had, we've been on the upswing for, for, for a decade now, but um, it is, uh, it is, a, it is, this is a 40 year old problem that we are still in the middle of coming back on. And I, I am eternally grateful to the governor for, for picking that up. Um, I don't know if I fully answered the question. If there's a piece of that that I need to circle back to, obviously, by all means, uh, point that out, Andy. And if Ned wants to pick that up, for sure. Sure, I'm, I'm happy to jump in. Thank you. Um, thanks for your great remarks, uh, Commissioner, and uh, response to that question. I, I just think of uh, the incredible partnerships that we've had with, with you and your team. Uh, you mentioned the, the Fjord Trail in the Hudson Highlands. There's uh, you know, major land acquisitions in, in the Highlands and throughout the Hudson Valley where we've partnered with you, um, one on the Kingston waterfront, that is a, a work in progress. So um, I, I think, you know, the stewardship of our existing parks is absolutely critical and we're thrilled to see the governor investing in that. But the new capital for, for parks capital um, is vital uh, and appreci so appreciated so that we can continue to build on those partnerships. And I would, and as to new projects, Andy, I would just, as Ned, Ned mentioned a couple of them, um, and but we are always looking for opportunities to expand. We need to be doing that downstate, in particular in the Hudson Valley. The Hudson Valley obviously is a, is a, is a, is a park destination. It's a, it's, 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 it's heaven for park lovers. There's so many opportunities for hiking, for being on the water, uh, and we need to make sure that there's always a, a broad, a, keep broadening the set of opportunities for people to get outside. Yeah, and we're thrilled. We're thrilled that uh, Commissioner Kulisade is going to be administering the grant uh, for filling in that missing link under the Mario Cuomo Bridge on the Westchester Riverwalk through that uh, municipal parks uh, program that he mentioned got some additional uh, funding this year, including the funds for that project. So that'll be a great partnership with Westchester County. George Latimer has been super committed to that. Uh, we have just uh, just really enthusiastic stakeholders. The village of Tarrytown is as a key partner and the lead agency in the environmental review. So that kind of partnership is what I was referring to in, in my introductory remarks and, and we're thrilled to, to have it with the commissioner, with the governor and uh, with our county and local partners. Wonderful. Uh, the next question is from Melissa Everett, who asks if uh, the opportunities discussed here today will be reflected in the next Regional Economic Development Council strategic plan. And just reading into this question a little bit, I think uh, there's probably two ways of looking at it. One is uh, what are the governor's priorities for the Regional Economic Development Councils, if we know anything about that yet, and then also uh, what some of um, the goals might be for the Mid-Hudson Regional Economic Development Plan, which is, of course, the region that most of us are, are calling in from today. 
Uh, so I'll turn that over to both of you, uh, given that Ned serves on the council and, and that the uh, commissioner is representing the governor. Ned, if you have an answer on that, I'll defer to you because uh, you're closer to the ground in, in terms of that economic development council. Otherwise, uh, we'll, be falling well paper, um, I imagine. what I what I can say, Melissa, and thanks for your leadership and uh, great work on so many uh, fronts uh, is is that we always uh, listen carefully uh, to the governor's state of the state and policy objectives and uh, we refresh our and update our strategic plan uh, on an annual basis. And um, so uh, we have the leadership of uh, Tom Scaglione uh, for the Mid-Hudson region. And we know that uh, as we develop our next strategic plan, we will be folding in all these priorities. And uh, you know, I'm proud to have served on that uh, regional council since its inception. And uh, it really has a strong emphasis on uh, green development, green jobs, uh, environmental sustainability, uh, climate change, uh, now regenerative agriculture is a crucial uh, uh, factor in, in it. Uh, so it's uh, you will you will absolutely see the governor's priorities reflected in in the updates and in the grant making that, that ensues in, in future years. Very good, thank you. Uh, so if I could just make a process note here, Commissioner, um, if you could please stop sharing your screen, that would be be really great. Just make it a little easier for all of us to uh, see each other and pretend that we're actually in a real live room as opposed to living through a digital presentation that I, I know so many of us are just so eager to be done with. Um, the next question, um, relates to invasive species in the region. And the uh, question we, um, uh, is about the round goby fish. Uh, the question is, I know this isn't your area of expertise, uh, but I'm curious about whether invasive species are addressed in the budget. The round goby is one of the invasive fish species that we have in the Hudson that is devastating native populations. I'm concerned it could get out of the river and go to Lake Champlain and other waters. Uh, I would, I think obviously, uh, you know, there, there's a lot of um, energy and, and focus around the Erie Canal and the future of the Erie Canal and, and, and certainly the management of invasive species is one of the factors there. Uh, obviously, there's there's a, a strong cohort that wants to make sure we maintain through navigation on that canal. So it's a it's a matter of figuring out the balance. Uh, there are lots of ideas about there about about ship about lists boat lists to get with that would might go over some kind of partition between the two watersheds. Uh, but certainly, it's it's very much being contemplated as part of the future of the Erie Canal. Very good. Uh, the next question uh, from Huntley Gill, also related to boats. Uh, what role will community docks and other infrastructure that promote water um, front access play in this year's budget? Well, uh, I think uh, obviously um, the, the same grant program that I spoke about earlier is available to communities that want to expand uh, their their access to the water and expand community docks. I'll notice actually, I'll just for the moment, I will actually uh, sort of preview uh, initiative of ours, which is to expand access to the Hudson River uh, between Hudson and Albany through what we are calling our Hudson Eagles uh, Recreation Area Initiative. And you should look to some announcements later this spring on some improvements to uh, the, the access to the river in Kuxaki. We're interested in making sure that people can get out there. So very much, uh, I encourage municipalities to come in for grants to expand their ability to provide access to waterfront, not just in the Hudson, but, but all across the state. Fantastic. And the questions are coming in here uh, quite quickly, which is very exciting to see all this engagement. Uh, this question is from Carter Strickland. Uh, Commissioner Kulisade, could you speak to your plans and the governor's budget for state aid to municipalities to build parks? Uh, this is a critical program to help the state meet its mission and expand access to open space. Uh, Carter also cites that there are several emerging initiatives in uh, Brooklyn and uh, other regions of uh, New York City. 
So yeah, thank you, Carter. Um, and again, I, I steer back to uh, our our municipal grants program. It's a program that uh, sort of I've been in and around for, for 30 years. We are expanding it this year. I'd like to see it continue to expand. I think it's a it's a it's a and I'd love to see the municipalities and the nonprofits uh, asking for more. I think it's a, it's a program where we regularly get more applications and we can fund. I said I think it's proposed to go to 26 million this year. Um, and uh, but I think it's a it's a we have a, we have a, a very seasoned grants crew who can minister this, and we'd love to see that program expand so that even more communities can benefit from it. But that's that's a great question. And then obviously, Carter. Uh, in fact, I think uh, we just gave a grant to the Trust for Public Land to allow them to continue their work to build uh, that sort of Long Island extension of the Empire State Trail. So. Um, I think it's a, it's a great program, and I, I believe, certainly haven't used it many years when I was in the nonprofit sector, it's a great program for, uh, uh, for, for, uh, for enabling the work of communities and nonprofits. Fantastic. Uh, and this next question is to both uh, you, Commissioner, as well as Ned. If you could both speak to the opportunities in the budget to forward the work of New York State, uh, MPOs, local municipalities, and others in partnership with conservation uh, organizations and nonprofits. Uh, the question also kind of cites that in order to create a truly unified, safe, non-motorized access and transportation network uh, to bring together our uh, parks and trails around the state, um, that you know, this is an area of, of kind of particular interest for Kevin. So again, the question is if you could speak to opportunities in the budget to bring together diverse partners to um, create non-motorized access to sites. Uh, is that is that water based or is it just any kind of non-motorized access? I, I think well, it's it's any kind of non-motorized access but my impression is that it relates to parks and trails and, and land access and safe streets so um obviously you know there, there are a number of programs right the, the department of state makes grant program and their uh, particularly the waterfront communities around their waterfront revitalization plans again i steer that we have our, our own program the matching grant program i talked to which can go to trails and trail building uh very much so uh, and I would point to, you know, that, 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 that program is levers, levers, it builds everybody, nonprofits and, and municipalities. And I would just steer back to, uh, we also have a grants program that I'm sure uh, that Sina Cutson and many other land trusts have used. It's the Land Trust Partnership Program administered by the DEC. It enables, it empowers uh, the land trust community to take on initiatives and, and do stuff through volunteers that might get that get done more efficiently and quickly under volunteers and under under local land trust, as well as a, a, a grant program to uh, the friends groups around state parks for, for doing access and other projects that improve the park. So there's a number of, of different pools that I'm um, happy to sort of list out at some point for if that makes sense as a follow up, Andy. Yeah, I'll jump in there. Thank you, uh, Commissioner, and uh, thank you, Kevin, for your leadership of uh, parks and uh, and bicycle access uh, throughout Ulster County and, and beyond. And uh, we are thrilled with the development of uh, the rail trails uh, throughout Ulster County uh, to um, the Asho along the Ashokan reservoir and uh, across our waterfront, what was our par waterfront park and will, will be a state park in the future uh, along the, the Kingston waterfront, part of the Empire State Trail uh, that the commissioner has re referred to and uh, which will continue all the way up, as you know, uh, to Albany and out the Erie Canal and, and up, up to Canada. Um, Sina Cutson is particularly interested in this topic because whether it's by bicycle or uh, by train or other uh, pedestrian access, uh, many of our parks are, are right along the waterfront, which is right along the Metro North Railroad Station. And so, you know, we're always uh, thrilled when the Environmental Protection Fund is increased as this budget has done, when the governor lays out you know, a $4 billion vision for 
the uh, Environmental Bond Act uh, and when she pr proposes increases in funding for the, the Parks Capital uh, Grant Program or Parks Capital Program. Um, so going back to uh, the Riverwalk extension under the, the Mario Cuomo Bridge, that is a, you know, that's, that's a transit oriented project because people from uh, Southern Tarrytown and Northern Irving, Irvington, people from Rockland County are going to be able to use that to get to the Tarrytown, uh, their Tarrytown and Sleepy Hollow Metro North uh, train stations and even on up uh, eventually connecting to, to uh, Croton and the, the uh, Amtrak station. So we think that is a, a great project for non-motorized access to all the incredible resources, Rockefeller Park Preserve, Lindhurst, uh, Phillipsburg Manor and others on the Westchester waterfront. Uh, other efforts are underway to create a similar trail uh, through Rockland County. And um, we're just thrilled that, you know, there's so much funding in different buckets uh, under Governor uh, Hochul's budget proposal that, that we're going to be able to connect the dots on projects like this, as well as the Fjord Trail, which is, uh, you know, com completely geared to uh, see uh, visit great visitation from uh, Metro North uh, and the, the whistle stop there or the Cold Spring, uh, Village of Cold Spring uh, Metro North Station. Fantastic. And I'll note here, just reviewing the Q and A as it comes in, I'm getting a lot of questions about individual line items within the Environmental Protection Fund. And I'm, I'm guessing, Commissioner, I don't want to put you through to having to kind of answer every particular uh, funding level proposed by the governor. So in the chat, I've posted a link to the coalition site for the New Yorkers for Clean Water and Jobs a group of nonprofit organizations and local government and businesses that work to support the Environmental Protection Fund, you can click on that link and uh, easily see a, a brief summary of what the governor has proposed for funding levels for those individual programs this year. Um, I'll now jump to a question by Simon Gruber, uh, who says that the draft scoping plan released for comment by the Climate Action Council include strong recommendations about the benefits of trees and woodlands and urban and suburban areas for carbon sequestration, heat island mitigation, and other benefits. He asks if the governor's proposed budget includes uh, significant increases here and what the state is doing on this front. And again, uh, Simon, I'll refer you to the link in the chat if you want to kind of check the specific appropriation level. But um, Commissioner, I'll send that question to you for a, a general response. Yeah, obviously, you know, the fact that that fact that healthy forests and healthy uh, natural lands are, are vitally important to to climate change, addressing both mitigate and resiliency and just uh, slowing the slowing the increase of carbon in the atmosphere. Uh, we obviously look at all we, we look at all our, our parks in that way. Um, uh, we need to have healthy forests or we, our forests are among as challenged as any other. Um, obviously, in the Hudson Valley, and we need to just make sure we continue to uh, uh, to take the measures to to keep those places and uh, keep those places green and open and, and as vibrant, uh, you know, carbon sinks. So uh, uh, we will continue those efforts, and certainly, I think it's well acknowledged that that's a, a vital part of any climate change strategy. Very good. Uh, the next question is from Andrew Mills, uh, relating to. Um, electrification programs in the state budget. He's asking if you happen to have any details regarding electrification of households and how that may influence uh, heating costs. Um, and if you don't, maybe there's a, a state agency or program that you could uh, direct Andrew to. On that one, uh, Andrew, we will get we'll get back to you, uh, Pavan. If you can note that, we should just get back to Andrew to sort of point him in that direction. I'm not I'm not uh, familiar with that, obviously, but it is a major initiative, and it's a, it's something we have to do in order to really address this climate challenge. Great. Uh, the next question comes from William Schuster. Are there opportunities in the budget for restoring connectivity between our fragmented parks and natural areas? Uh, 
uh, William then goes on to cite there's a lot of benefits to this for people, uh, reducing accidents between uh, vehicles and wildlife, and helping all of our communities and species respond to climate change. And nice to hear from Bill Schuster. Uh, uh, obviously, we have uh, uh, Black Rock Forest has a, uh, a visionary proposal that in, in the Open Space Institute and uh, to to kind of combine to sort of with a vision of be of a land crossing over the throughway in Orange County to enable wildlife and people to get back and forth. Uh, we think it's a great concept. Uh, right now, that program, we're looking mainly at the, the federal buckets, the federal, the federal, the new federal legislation. Um, and we always need to be thinking about because the federal dollars are coming to New York in a big way. We need to make sure that they're spent wisely. Uh, there is money for these kinds of land crossings there. So that's our first stop there. But there may be state opportunities for state funding as well. And, and really, uh, it not only obviously helps wildlife and critters, but it's also something that gets people back and forth in a great way. So uh, it, for these major arteries that uh, uh, that are that are blocking access back and forth. And I should note the governor's proposal is obviously not just um, in the Hudson Valley, the governor has proposed major proposals to, to, to eliminate highways in some of our downtown areas, to deck the Cross Bronx Expressway. There are some major initiatives around, around making sure that these, uh, these arteries of, of traffic and commerce no longer serve, no longer cut up our landscape, but actually offer opportunities to, to you re, re stitch together our landscapes. Fantastic. Uh, the next question is from Eileen Larrabee. Uh, who is celebrating the increases in proposed funding in multiple uh, state programs this year in the governor's budget, and also asks if uh, agency staffing levels are able to creep, keep up with the increasing popularity and making these investments run smoothly. Obviously, uh, nice to hear from you, Eileen. Uh, obviously, um, uh, across the board, I, I can speak mainly for parks. Um, but I do think all the agencies, mostly certainly the agencies in this sector, uh, have received uh, sort of increases to fill levels for parks. Uh, we expect our fill level, our fill level, has risen in the next budget to allow us to get up to 2008 levels. Uh, not historic, but certainly uh, well on the path towards giving ourselves the ability to grow. We also, as an agency with earned revenue, uh, we are somewhat unique among, among New York State agencies that we have strong earned revenue from parking and concessions and golf and camping. Uh, and we have gotten greater flexibility to spend that money as we need to to hire staff or to make sure that all those plans are served. So we are we are very optimistic that there's new flexibility in this budget to allow us to hire and build the kind of staffing and operating um, capacity that we need in order to take on what is a very ambitious agenda. And we will continue to be looking at that because as we bring on new parks, every new park uh, is need requires staffing. So it's something we need to be always mindful of. So thank you for that question. Wonderful. And we have a related question from Steve Stan, uh, which I'll paraphrase here, Steve. Um, it's uh, Commissioner, it's really about uh, staffing resources, new staffing resources that are available to the DEC for addressing you know, similar uh, situations uh, that we heard about in the uh, previous question. Yeah, I would just I think I think right now it's a question of momentum. I think, like I said, DEC like parks uh, has uh, I understand they've gotten uh, an increase uh, uh, fill level as we call it at the state. It's your fill level is sort of the cap on the number of full time equivalent employees you can have in place. Uh, they also have gone up. We'll be spending much of this coming year building back up uh, from cuts that were to, from the hiring freeze that preceded this time, and also the challenges to the budget because of COVID. But I know the DEC has got some capacity to continue hiring too, but I think we may find ourselves need to keep going in the next year's budget. But I think right now, this year, you're going to see momentum towards in, for building back uh, the staff that's been lost to the agency in the last uh, three, four years. Wonderful. And uh, getting a, a good question, maybe we'll shake up the theme a little bit from uh, Mark King, uh, who, for those of you who don't know, is, is working and doing a lot of great work on the Mohawk River, you know, one of the major tributaries to the Hudson and is certainly part of our, our broader ecosystem. Mark asks if you could comment on uh, any focus areas in the budget that are focused on the Mohawk Valley. The Mohawk Valley, obviously, the Mohawk Valley um, uh, is 
there's obviously a lot of economic development activity in and around Utica. Mark, as a land conservationist, I'm sure you're, you're actually thinking more about that. There is um, not so much budget, but there's certainly programmatic looking at the Erie Canal and thinking about the future of the Erie Canal and what that can mean as a recreational and, and natural resource. Um, uh, and you know, Mohawk Valley, uh, back to sort of Janet Burnett's question, um, is obviously the cradle of the Revolutionary War. So there's huge opportunities to to build in the in, you know to to reframe the Mohawk Valley as a natural and historic destination as part of preparations for uh, celebration of the 250th anniversary of the Declaration of Independence. Uh, and obviously all the other programs that we keep going there. And, we, and Mark, we thank you for your work and. Uh, and look forward to, I'm sure you can bring us opportunities to expand our investments in, in, that, in that area. Wonderful, and we're coming up on time here. I think we're gonna only have a moment for one more question that I will, will put forward. Uh, so just a reminder to everybody uh, that thank you. We've, we've had just a wonderful um, expression of great questions here today. And uh, we will be sharing all of these with the governor's office and your contact information if we have it. Um, and uh, we will pass it on and they will be getting back to you. So the, the closing question is uh, both to Ned and to uh, the commissioner. And um, the question is uh, complimenting both of you in your presentation and no notes that they wish other parts of the country were as far ahead as New York and the Hudson Valley. And uh, they're just wondering, uh, with all the one great momentum for projects in our region in New York State, what advice would you have for others who would like to uh, replicate uh, our success? How can we be working together uh, in new ways to get more wonderful projects done? Well, I'll, I'll just say, and thank you for that. Um, uh, appreciate the vote of confidence. Uh, and uh, we obviously at Parks, uh, and I'll say this, uh, you know, it was particularly with respect to Cena Cuts and our hosts, you know, a lot of it's about partnerships, right? And, and we cannot do it alone. Uh, we need you both as advocates, we need you as partners. Uh, we get a lot done through concessionaires, through nonprofits, through partners like Cena Cuts and for land acquisition, for park development. Uh, all this stuff happens because of the teammates we have. And, and so I, I would just ask the entire community to, we, we want to spend these monies well. Uh, we want to make sure that they're responding to community needs uh, and really look forward to, to being in partnership uh, with as broad a, a broad a community as possible. Thank you, Commissioner. I, I couldn't agree more with the importance of uh, partnerships, uh, good communication, uh, you know, looking at the the broad picture of needs in your region, and then uh, trying to move forward specific projects on the ground that uh, realize your, your vision and, and community's dreams. Uh, I, I would like to just uh, emphasize a point that Andy uh, inferred in his introductory remarks, which is that the governor's proposal uh, executive budget is just that. And the legislature now weighs in and makes its priorities known. And then there's a three-way negotiation uh, among uh, the governor, the Senate, and the assembly. So um, it's really important for you to let your elected officials know what are your priorities so that the final budget uh, embodies those. And so, you know, the increases that we've all been talking about today are great news, but they're just a proposal at this point. So if you agree with them and our enthusiasm, it's crucial that you let everybody know and you know, going down to the programmatic level uh, doesn't hurt. So thank you. Thank you again, Commissioner. You did a great job and we're honored to be here with you. Uh, thank you, Andy, for your great moderation and for to everybody who attended and uh, behind the scenes who uh, made this work techn technologically. Thank you, Cena Cuts, and, uh, and thank, thank you for hosting. Thank you for rising to this and hosting. It's, it's great to be able to get, I think, I think it's actually great bringing together these three things by community, by interest areas. So thank you for, thank you for agreeing to do that. Well, thank you for everyone for joining us. Uh, this concludes today's program. I hope you all have a, a great weekend and enjoy the coming winter snow.